Every year, as the managers of the country's economy read out the projections, the trends point to a significant growth in the economy, with conclusions that the country is on the right path. Looking back at the economic performance in the post-independence government that subscribed to the socialist ideology, experts argue that there has been a significant progress in the era of capitalism, even as the citizenry continues to condemn the adoption of the structural adjustment policies of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank that ushered in the free market economy. While the growth has been very significant in terms of GDP growth, around 6%, at one time even going to 9%, and Uganda being almost the third highest growing economy uh, in the world, currently is $24 uh, uh, billion dollars total GDP, and also the rate of growth being very, very high and competing actually at, at, at global level. The, the major contradiction remains the share of the benefit of this growth. Experts argue that the private sector-led growth adopted by the government needs to ride on the principle of limited government interventions, especially in creating policies to guide the market forces instead of a total liberalization. So there is need not to overtrust the private sector, get it from me. If you don't want, then you are going to see results and you are not going to, 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 you are going to regret. So you need a government, and I think most of our governments have learned that you liberalize the economy, but you have, must have a carrot and stick. If you, you liberalize, then you have to have very good fiscal policy. That you do this, but also I have this regulation. You do this, you have this penalty. You would not say you totally liberalize the economy without having a stick that you're going to use in the case of over uh, liberalizing and also overstepping the red line, which can now plunge the whole economy into chaos. The free market economy appears to have ushered in hard times, with the prices of commodities and services going up, compared to the days when the state solely provided critical services like electricity and banking services. The question of why the growth does not trickle down to the citizens still puzzles the mind, although experts blame it on poor attitude of the citizens. People need to take advantage of these economic opportunities, you see. And two, the economic policies being appropriate to be able to, to, to trickle down the benefits of growth. These are the two major dimensions. Now, so while government has a duty to make sure that, for example, it comes up with a very good fiscal policy, the people also have a, a, a duty to ensure that you take advantage of the available economic opportunities. The parliament 